Vic Belig is here in the house. He's a Lubbock County Horticulture Extension agent. And uh, last last week we were sitting there talking about the roses and things like that. And my grandma always said <laughs> that we needed to, you know, you needed to prune your roses before the end of January. Of course, my grandma lived in Southern Illinois. Well, sure, so that could be the difference. It may not have been that she was wrong about doing that. She lived in a different <laughs> climate. Okay, now this isn't dissing your grandma. We know that the Master Gardenership of Lubbock, Texas, is listening. Right. So if you have any rose connoisseurs, we've we've got a couple. Well, what I'm saying is, is you know, you better watch your p's and q's here. No, I know. Okay, so is it time to, or is it should you have already, or should you have waited to prune your roses? A lot of recommendations say that you should wait till it you start to get some warm up. Some some warm up in the spring, um, you know. As, as we get in early March, it's it's probably not a bad time to start start looking at that and start working on them. That now, does it mean because we had an eighty degree day, right? Because it's going to get cold again, <laughs> right? You know, we've we were talking about earlier. We've got a chance of snow on Tuesday, so it's. Can you believe that? Uh, I don't want to, <laughs> but it's been. You know, we have a lot of up and down here, and we right. were talking about Murfreesboro, and you know, I don't know a whole lot about Illinois, but that's where your grandma lived, Tom. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But they've got they probably have less temperature fluctuations through this time this part of the year. Mm-hmm. So their plants probably maintain dormancy until they're actually in the spring, till it really starts to warm up. Yeah. Um here our plants get so confused. You know, I've got peach trees that are already starting to you can kind of if you look out over a bunch of peach trees, you can start to see them kind of turn pink just a little bit when the new stems and the new buds. Mm-hmm. Well, I've got some pink in the orchard and Man, that scares me because mm-hmm. it's, it's February, too early, and just because it's been so warm, and so the, well, it's supposed to <clears throat> like there's snow, possible snow in yeah. the forecast Tuesday for right. crying yeah. out loud, <clears throat> and right. lows like 18 or something, and so we get a lot of a lot of weird temperature fluctuations here that you know maybe aren't common to a lot of other other climates, um, but no roses, you know. And I was doing some research on them, and, you know, the ones that need the most heavy pruning are the big hybrid tea roses. And those are, you know, the ones that are going to grow five, six, seven feet tall, have more of the single stem, large, you know, large roses on them. Um, uh, Most of the recommendations I've seen kind of recommend that you prune those back to some main stalks, some main canes, um, you know, as as short as two feet, Hmm. you know. Um, a good rule of thumb that a lot of people recommend is when you prune any kind of rose is to take it back by half. So you take the overall size of the rose and cut it back about halfway. And that will um, promote good growth, promote good flowering throughout the season. Um, a good rule of thumb is to take all of the crossing uh, branches and canes out of the middle. You know, roses kind of mm-hmm. they grow right. pretty <clears throat> vigorously. And so you'll get a whole lot of branches. So in other grow. words, what you're trying are you trying to maintain like a like creative vase shape? Or yeah. Just vertical and vase shape, but you get the leaners. You get the left leaners. You got to cut them out of there. <laughs> I have I have no comment. on and that. And on the other side of that yeah, issue, I, I you have, do have to cut those I have way no right on ones of off. But see, the thing is, is if you got a right leaner, if you go to the other side of the plant, it'll be a left leaner. Yeah. <laughs> it's all the same. All works out the same. No, I mean you want all to, part of the same plant, right? Right. <clears throat> you want to keep sort of a rounded aspect to it, mm-hmm. um, so you know, leave it a little bit taller in the middle and round it out. But you want to pull out a lot of those crossing branches that grow up into the middle of the shrub. Um, they'll okay. rub on each other. They'll right. cause damage. Um, you don't get good air circulation through there, and it can lead to roses are probably the most heavily bred and heavily managed crop on the planet. Um, there are so many varieties of roses. They do so much hybridization that it makes for good, strong, pretty plants, but they're susceptible to a lot of diseases. Mm-hmm. And so you want to keep air movement through there. You want to keep humidity relatively low through that canopy. So taking out some of those branches from the middle will help the healthier rose. Okay. I wouldn't we, even think humidity would be an issue. Well, around here, not as much. Yeah. All right, now. Uh, Aphids, uh, though, would be. Sure. Putting you on the spot. Okay. Okay. Uh-oh. Relatively speaking, you know, we were talking about, <laughs> you know, genetically genetically modified organisms, and you know, talking about a lot of people are concerned when when it comes to food sure. because people are ingesting it. But when I was talking to Doctor Chuck West yesterday, he's plant and soil sciences mm-hmm. at at uh, you know Texas Tech, which you, I'm sure you know him. Sure. You know, he was saying when when they. <clears throat> genetically modify pants to get, you know, certain attributes that that's more of a crude process. 
In other words, oh, yeah. in other words, you know, you're going for one thing, but you don't know. You you never know what you're going to get when it comes to the rest of it because it's mm-hmm. it's you're focusing on like a color or right. You know, trying to make the buds bigger, the blooms bigger. The and, food and, more nutritious. Sure. Well, but, but, but what I'm saying is, is, is he he said that you know the 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 plant science of you know hybridization and genetic manipulation in the the food crop is a lot more sophisticated than in as, as in like a horticulture like a plant level just for for looking at. Well, and it really depends what you're looking at too. And when when we talk about GMOs, most of what I think people are concerned about is when you do like actual gene insertions and you go in there and you, you know, radio label a gene and insert it in. Most of what you're going to get is conventional breeding. And that's, you know, and that's kind of what you're talking about where you take two plants with different characteristics and you cross them and you get seed or whatever. Um, or you know you can do it vegetatively, but you get seed, plant out seeds, and then you're really trying to select. Really, what it is is selection. You're speeding up natural selection, and so instead of you know over years and years the um, strongest plant or whatever being the one that survives and propagates, you're selecting for specific things. So maybe in roses you're trying to develop one that's not the largest growing with large canes and the most vigorous, but has a very specific flower color. Hmm. Well, yeah, you can pick that one. You can breed that out and get that. But kind of like you're saying, it comes with a drawback sometimes because you're not necessarily picking the strongest, most vigorous um, plant or, or, you know, genetics. Uh, You can get issues with, um, you know, again, disease resistance, or they may be less cold tolerant or, Whatever. And so it's kind of a, you know, there's a balance that you have to find there. What do you want in terms of flower color or, you know, overall appearance versus what do you want in terms of toughness? And so that's why we do a lot of grafting in the in horticulture. We'll take a tough root stock from like a climbing rose and take the top part, the flowering part from the, the rose that exhibits the characteristics we want and graft them together. And so you get a strong root system with a, a, a desirable flowering effect. Okay, now, mm. uh, just curious, because <clears throat> roses, roses don't put off seeds, or do they? Hybrid roses don't. Um, if you go out and look at some wild roses or even some of the knockouts and just um, you know some of the more ever-blooming roses, you'll get a little fruit on them. Uh, call them rose hips. Um, when I was in Colorado... Um, in October, the the roses had just dropped their leaves, or they were just dropping their leaves, and there was bright red rose fruit everywhere. Rose wow. hips, yeah, uh, it's real citrusy. It's uh, not citrusy, <clears throat> kind of tastes sour. Okay, so and you know I may be you know being stupid here, but if you if you're taking a stalk and a and a top flower and you put them in, you graft them together and you put them together, sure. Then how do you actually reproduce that? Do, because is that not a hybrid? It is. Well, in some ways it is. And most of those that are grafted, um, they're so they're reproducing them through cuttings. They'll take cuttings, oh, root it. the cuttings, make a new plant, and then graft them to a, a rootstock. You know, you don't get a lot of seed propagation in roses. I mean, it's, it's a high-value crop. They want to crank a lot of them out. So most of what they're going to do is cutting, you know, cutting propagation. Um, but out in the wild, yeah, you can get seeds off of roses for oh, sure. That's interesting. You for know, sure. I've actually got a picture somewhere. Here's an idea for Valentine's Day: give your loved one not just a dozen roses, but how about a rose plant that they could plant? Yeah, there you and go. And have continuous roses. No, oh, and I long. think I think that's a good idea. And it's you know it's a little bit early still, but you could plant them with some shelter and get them covered up. Yeah, and you could plant a rose right now, and I, I think it's a good idea. Well, thank you. Well, goody. I had a good idea. Big <laughs> Did we write this down? <laughs> did we get? Did we record him saying that? Thank Lubbock you. Lubbock County Horticulture <laughs> Extension Agent Vic Valiga, thanks for coming in. All right, thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it.